Well, hello everyone and welcome. My name is Mac Atkinson and I'd like to welcome you all to the June 2020 Fusion Network Conference Call. We're gonna talk a little bit about this month about skincare and the importance for both men and women in terms of how we treat our skin. Since we normally focus on what we put in our body, this one's gonna be what we put on the outside of our body as well. And I'm so pleased to, to have with me again this month, um, Dolphin Boschman, great. Welcome back again. Cheryl Harris, love seeing you as always. And Tim Bollinger, Tim, so nice to have you on too as another male testimony on how this stuff really works. So. Um, Great to have you all on and, and thank you so much for, for being here. Uh, if I can figure out how to work the slides, then we'll go to the next one. As always, I'd like to start off with our little disclaimer saying none of the information provided in this presentation is intended to represent a diagnosis or cure of any illness or disease. You know, for brand new people that are perhaps watching this that have never really heard much about Sunrider before, very quickly, I just want to let you all know that Sunrider's been around for over 38 years, so it's an extremely stable country, company, I should say. It operates in over 50 countries around the world, which allows all of us an opportunity at a specific rank to actually build an international business, which is part of what I love so much about this company, allowing me a chance to travel around the world a couple of times every year, working in different cultures with different people. So great opportunity there internationally. Sunrider 100% handles all of the research, development, and manufacturing, all internal, no third parties, of over 400 of the world's finest whole food nutritional products, nutritional foods, cleansing beverages, weight management, sports and fitness, green household, and our topic for today, all natural skincare and cosmetics. All manufactured right here on your screen at the 1 million square foot manufacturing facility in Los Angeles, California. Again, our topic today, this month, is going to be candescent in our superior skin care. And there's just a couple things I'd like to share with everybody before we start getting into the meat of the program here, and that is, did a little research, and when you think about why skin care is important, of course, and the market size, when we look at it from the business perspective, by the year 2025, the skincare market worldwide is projected to reach $190 billion. That's with a B. That's a lot of zeros out there, okay? Of which, Tim, about $20 million billion of it is going to come from in. So we'll be out there buying that stuff too. There's two main reasons why we see this tremendous influx in people looking at skincare. Number one is a desire for anti-aging products. And number two is people are searching out and demanding products that are made with natural ingredients. And that's what we're all about in Sunrider. It's all natural ingredients. And we truly have the answer for this huge market. Um, when we talk about, and we'll get into detail here in a second, but when you look at the key things that truly make Sunrider in our candescent line different than what's out there on the commercial market is all of our products are uniquely formulated with superior natural ingredients, herbs, emollients, plant extracts, and essential oils, making them highly effective. They moisturize without being abrasive or harmful to the skin. As I mentioned before, all of our products are internally manufactured. So there's no third party things where we would give a company a recipe and just tell them to go make it for us. That's not what Sunrider is all about. We control all of the research, development, and manufacturing internally. And we manufacture our candescent and our skincare line just as we do with all of our foods, all under the philosophy of regeneration, which again says if we nourish and cleanse our body, it will be in balance. And same thing with our skin. The candescent products, as we're going to talk to you about in a minute, contain no mineral oils, lanolins, animal or bi petroleum byproducts, no harmful ingredients that you'll find in most commercial cosmetic brands. And lastly, the candescent products are highly concentrated, as all of our foods are as well, making them less expensive than store brands, which quality and value for less is what this comes down to. Um, Cheryl, can I turn to you for just a second as we kind of get into some of the ingredients that some of the some of the other commercial brands that we'll find in the marketplace use out there? There's some pretty nasty stuff in skincare. Uh, yes, there is. And, you know, back years ago, I owned restaurants and I used to, I was an environmentalist even back then, and I used to recycle my grease from my deep fryers. I put it in the alley in a big container. And every week they come and pick it up. And I often wondered what they did with that oil. <laughs> and after doing some research, I found out that companies buy it 
and they use it in skincare. Hopefully that's not true today, but uh, that really gave me a wake, a wake up call to you know really paying attention to what's in things that we put on our skin. And some of the common ingredients is ozocarite, which is a derivative of coal and shale, mm -hmm. and microcrystalline, which is derived from petroleum, and lanolin, which is from sheep wool, and harmful ingredients, you know, and those ingredients often cause allergic reactions and uh, sensitivities. And a lot of people use artificial colors to make everything look pretty because people buy things when they're pretty. And, you know, those are not things that we want to put on our skin because our skin is our largest cleansing organ and it has to do a big job. So what we do want to put on our skin are things like our squalene, our, our uh, <laughs> peptides that um, uh, peptides are great to combat things that damage our skin. It helps keep our skin soft and smooth and it helps diminish wrinkles, right? And one thing that I love, an ingredient I love, is a hyaluronic acid and that's been used a lot lately in our skincare products. And that really gives the skin a soft, smooth glow. And uh, we use, like I said, a squalene, which uh, is a very safe um, oil that the body recognizes. And uh, in the last, I don't know, five, six years, we started to use plant, plant stem cells from grapes, I think from France. And um, I've really noticed a difference in how my skin is toned. And so as far as ingredients, when you look at it, it looks like you're gonna create a salad dressing <laughs> to naturally put in our body. So why not put it on our skin? Yeah, so true, Shirley. You know, um, I, I, if it, by the way, Finn, if you and Tim have anything that you'd like to share on these ingredients, please do um, before I jump in. Did you guys have any comments on this or? Well, I'd like to make a comment. Um, last week's uh, Dr. Rubin call was on skincare and what I found interesting, uh, a question came up about coconut oil and somebody was saying, you know, and a lot of people use coconut oil because they think it's a much healthier, cleaner, um, type of, of moisturizer. But I found it interesting that uh, Dr. Rubin was talking about how coconut oil is actually quite, it goes rancid very quickly. And <clears throat> if you don't know how to uh, formulate it or process it properly, it actually has a lot of impurities in it. So um, I thought that was interesting because a lot of us may know, oh no, I don't use mineral oil, but I'm using coconut oil. And yet that's not necessarily the best, it's probably a better choice, but not as necessarily the best choice. And that was a reason that he gave that, why Sunrider doesn't choose to use coconut oil. And again, I just find that the expertise in Sunrider, like just to know that and research and just source out the best, absolute best products, like here with the, the vegetable origin uh, squalane, we know that uh, you can get squalene from um, sea, uh, seafood, like certain types of uh, sea creatures. But of course, Sunrider doesn't choose that. They use, I believe ours is um, olive oil based. Right. And so again, just that attention to detail of the, the raw ingredients uh, really sets us apart. Often so true. You know, one of the things I've observed, and in, in, to your point about Ruben's comment with coconut oil, you're right. When when Sunrider looks at things like that, it's never just a quick thought about it. They really do their research and they find out how various aspects of a certain ingredient or something will actually function in the body. And one of the things that I've observed too over the last 18 years is we talk about peptides now, pretty commonplace, hyaluronic acid, same way, plant-based stem cells. There are other companies that have these ingredients that are part of their skincare as well. What I always found so interesting though, is you look back at the history of these and Dr. Chen and Sunrider was always the first, okay? I mean, you look back, these things, you know, we've been using these ingredients for 10, 12, 15 years in some cases since the beginning okay in terms of squalene in terms of our products and it's taken the rest of the industry though that period of time 15 years to kind of catch up with what dr chen knew years ago 
And that's why I think we've always been so far ahead of the curve in terms of what our skincare is all about. Um, you know, you mentioned squalene and, and you're absolutely right. One of the things that, that really was important to me was, first of all, squalene is the only oil that mixes synergistically with water, okay? It's the only oil that does that. Secondly, it has a molecular size that allows it to actually penetrate our skin. Most of the other, well, we already talked about some of the bad stuff, but most of those things, the molecule size is so big, it won't even penetrate the skin. It just sits on your skin. Squalene will actually allow all of the other wonderful things associated with it to penetrate. So it goes deeper in with things like the hyaluronic acid, like you were talking about, Cheryl, which will really plump the skin. I, I'm trying to remember the number. It delivers like, what, 3,000 times water molecule than any other thing else getting back into the skin to produce that plump, nice, smooth finish that you were talking about there. So again, when we start looking at some of these ingredients that are not household names today, but a little bit more common. It's amazing. Sunrider has been using them for a long time, and it certainly has set us apart in terms of what we do and what the skincare is all about. So anyway, great stuff there. Any other last comments on ingredients before we move on to pH? Well, uh, yeah, Tim. Is, um, you know, going back 18, 20 years ago, touring a factory, yeah. and it's, it, it's all these years later seeing the quality of ingredients such as what we're talking about here and the organic and natural botanical aspects of it. It's all based on trust. It's the same um, premise I apply to my architecture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, you know, Tim, when we, when you talk about that, I mean, We've all, all of us have had a chance to tour the facility a number of times. And Tim, you said it. I mean, I know that your background is in architecture and, and some incredible things that you've been involved with. But when you toured the facility the last couple of times, I mean, what did you see in terms of, well, I showed the picture, a million square foot manufacturing dedicated facility just to the Sunrider Foods and, and, and skincare lines. What did you see in there that really impressed you coming from an architectural background? Um, was it you know, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lead y'all, let you say it. Go ahead, tell me what you saw. <laughs> well, you know, ingenuity, creativity, and uh, attention to detail to, you know, Dr. Chen, um, as we know, he designed a lot of the equipment to achieve the results he was looking for. So it's, it's that type of ingenuity and level of, um, detail and, and the depths that they go to to create a unique product that actually um, is good for you whatever whether it be food or skincare but it is also regenerative and that's another aspect of, of the skincare it's not um, as we know a lot of companies make, produce products in their large manufacturing facilities uh, to sell a product um, you know, and the Sunrider or the Chen's philosophy, we won't produce it unless it regenerates you. And that obviously applies to the skincare. So it's that level of, of uh, detail in thinking that you see and becomes real evident in the manufacturing facilities and equipment and the cleanliness and the, again, the attention to detail. Yeah, you know, so right on. And I, I know we've got a lot to cover, but I did. I want to ask you one more question about your thoughts on the facility. One of the things that I observed, and you just touched on it a second ago, was how Sunrider has kind of looked at how air flows through the facility, how what type of water comes in, um, the cleanliness or the, the cleaning aspects that are happening every single day at that facility. That is part of the architecture of it as well, right? I mean, that all had to be designed in their initial thinking of this thing is how, how air and water and everything would flow through this process. And pretty impressive, yes? It is very impressive. I mean, you know, it's, it's, that's the infrastructure to be able to produce these products. And as, you're, as you mentioned, the air, I mean, it's, I forget to which level is purified, but it's beyond most um, clean or surgical rooms. Yep. As water purification, it's purified yep. to great levels and depths. Um, Absolutely. 
type of a food manufacturing facility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, in Tim, you just touched on, I mean, you're right. The Sunrider is required to manufacture under a food grade license, which is pretty stringent itself. But as you can see, the second bullet point there, we use pharmaceutical grade machinery and the GMP or good manufacturing practices that Sunrider employees in that facility are really based on pharmaceutical guidelines that they do not have to adhere to. Sunrider chooses to adhere to the highest possible standard. That's why they continue to earn awards and recognition for the cleanliness and, and everything that goes on from in this facility. Everything from the raw materials arriving on one end to a completed finished product leaving the other side of the facility. So again, so impressive. And, and Tim, thank you from the ar architectural standpoint, kind of sharing a little bit of what you saw there too. Um, ladies, I know you both probably have something to say about the facility, but we got a lot to cover, so I'm going to move on, okay? <laughs> um, Cheryl, back to you a little bit. We talk a lot about pH balance and the importance of that in terms of our skin. Would you touch a little bit on these next few slides and why this is so critical? Well, our skin is our largest organ, and it starts on the inside of the body, which is why we eat the foods that we eat in Sunrider, because the Chans, in their wisdom, they always go into detail to cover everything, so we nourish the skin from the inside out. And I noticed when I first started Sunrider with eating New Plus and Quinery, the changes in my skin and my nails was amazing. So because it is our largest organ and it, you know, it covers our outside of our body, we have to take care of it so it protects us. It's very fragile. It breathes and it has many important functions for us. So if we want to protect ourselves against infections, germs, viruses, any, and get rid of toxins in the body, we have to keep it in the proper pH. We have to nourish it. Actually with skincare, we first have to cleanse it. Mm -hmm. Then we nourish, balance it and then we nourish it. A little bit different than when we eat our foods. Mm -hmm. And because uh, in Sunrider we have the philosophy of regeneration, we consider the skin the sixth element in the philosophy. And the, in my opinion, one of the most important elements. Agreed, agreed. Mm -hmm. You know, um, tying in with the whole pH situation, uh, people have heard well, some people are aware of the acid mantle that, that makes up part of our skin and, and how the skin works. Can you talk a little bit about the acid mantle and how it relates to pH? And um, then we'll kind of finish up on this part of it and get into some product conversation. Yeah, the skin, you know, has, has three main layers. One is the dermis, the epidermis, and then the subcutaneous layer, which is where the hair follicle is. So the top layer of the skin is actually um, our protective part. So it has what's called an acid mantle. And the acid mantle in the skin on the outside is around 5.5 to 6.5. So anything that we put on our skin should not disturb that acid mantle mm -hmm. because it regulates our oil, it regulates our water balance in the body. It, we, we need to perspire and if we put anything on it that closes off our breathing, then we're in big trouble. And so, um, you know, today, like for instance, with all this stuff going on with the viruses, everybody's washing their hands all the time. And I'm constantly hearing women in the washroom saying, my hands are so dry. And, you know, so what they're doing is they're stripping the acid mantle off the skin. So we don't want to be doing that. So with the skin, we need to do um, uh, protection on the outside, but we actually have to cleanse deep too because we have to get down into the hair follicle, which is water-based, in order to cleanse out any impurities deep. So what I love about our system is we have the right balance of products in our basic products to get deep, clean the, clean the surface oil off with our cleansing cream, get deep into the hair follicle with our revitalizing cleanser. And then of course we balance with our um, splash and or toner, whichever you prefer. And then we moisturize. Absolutely. So we have a great system. Yeah. For hey, um, 
let me come back to this chart for a second on pH because one of my favorite things to do in a candescent based meeting is to sample other commercial products in terms of their pH. And Dolphin, you're shaking your head. You've probably done this a thousand times too. I mean, I um, hold on without messing up the whole recording here and so forth. I always try to keep handy my pH chart, etc. And I've got my pH paper and a few um, ancillary products I typically use to show what some of the commercial brands are all about in terms of pH. But Cheryl, anything more you would say on this? I mean, again, one of my favorite things to do is this in terms of a demonstration. And I, I'm not going to name names on other popular facial soaps or anything like that. But what I have always found, and please jump in too, is that the only ones that are truly pH balanced in terms of products that I've ever found have been the, the Sunrider products. Everything else is on one or, or, or the opposite end of the spectrum there in terms of alkaline or acid. Has that been your experience too? Oh, absolutely. I can't tell you how many times I've done this test. And I'll, I ask women to bring, when I used to do the, the in-home parties, mm -hmm. I ask women to uh, bring their products with them so they can test it for themselves, right? And they were shocked, totally shocked. The other thing I want to add to this is, you know, when we take a shower, wash our face, we always use a uh, cotton cloth. Mm -hmm. And um, very, very important what you wash it in. Because, you know, a lot of people like their whites bleached and they use bleach and harsh detergents. And then you put it on your face. So it's really important that you keep the things that you wash your face and skin with in a pH balance too. That's why we're, I'm so happy we have our pH balanced cleansing products for laundry and, and home. Absolutely. And the, as we saw a minute ago in terms of the acid mantle and what's appropriate for the skin, it's in that range of what, Cheryl? 5.0 to 6.5 for the skin. Got it. The body is a little more um, alkaline, so um, seven. Mm. And then um, our digestive system is a little more acid, so we need to be a little lower with our digestive system. Got it. Dolphin, did you have something you wanted to add in? Yeah, just a couple of things. For those that don't understand PA, the, the, um, the chart, um, that each time you go up even a 0 0.0, um, that's to the power of 10. So it sounds like a very small amount, like a 5.5 to 6.5, but that it is a huge amount um, on the periodic um, chart. Um, and also another thing that I wanted to mention, there is one commercial brand, we all know it, I won't say the name, that um, uh, advertises that they are pH balanced. And I've tested it and it does come up pH, but what's interesting is how they get it to a pH balance. And I remember Dr. Chen talking about this before of how the difference between using ingredients that are already pH balanced and, and, and creating it in a natural way versus um, companies that will make the formula and then they use a chemical to change the pH <clears throat> so that then it's, you know, that pH balance. And um, so that's also something to keep in mind is how it's created. Um, and that particular brand, uh, my sweetie guy uses it, his choice. But also what I find too is that um, it's better than maybe some other brands, but the amount of soap scum that have to clean off the shower <laughs> it's very interesting it's like eh, like really do you want that soap scum on your skin <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know um yeah uh, just there's there's you know there's a lot more to it than often that the uh, advertising will have you know or believe right but, yeah our, us men need a little more education sometimes <laughs> <laughs> absolutely tim <laughs> Exactly. And, you know, it was just kind of covered, but again, the importance of the pH and what it can do for your skin is premature signs of aging and wrinkles, skin sensitivities, inflammation, infections, dry skin, you name it. And there again, uh, it's, it's all about how these things are formulated, the expertise that's put into them, and of course, the ingredients that make them as wonderful as they are for our skin. 
Um, let's get into some of the products. Um, whoever wants to jump into this one, please. One of the great things that Sunrider offers, especially for introducing people to these whole concepts and about, you know, um, cleansing oil-based impurities, cleansing water-based impurities, bring the skin back into balance and then moisturizing. Um, here's the perfect set. You know, the, either the Oiland or the Candison skincare sets um, coming in a trial size as well. And again, Cheryl, Finn, Tim, anybody want to jump into this one a little bit? I will. Go. Okay. I love it. I just love this set. It's something I give to people a lot because it's, they, have a, they have an experience right away. Um, the first step, like I was saying, is to remove the oil-based impurities without disturbing the acid mantle. We have our cleansing cream. Mm -hmm. And very little. It's so concentrated, you need very little. You just dab some on your face and massage upwards. And I do my eyes last to take off the mascara. I use cotton to take it off, mm -hmm. cotton um, pads. And then I use a cotton face cloth to wash it off. And then I want to cleanse deep into the hair follicle. So I use my revitalizing cleanser. And, oh, and these smell so natural and so nice. It's, and they feel like silk on your skin. So anyway, I just use a little dab of this. And I mean a little. And I dab it and then I add water and suds it up. And there's not much suds, but boy, does it get things clean deep. And then I wash that off with a cotton cloth. Then I take a white cotton pad and I use my toner and very little toner. Some people like to make it go farther and they spray a little bit of distilled water on, then put the toner on. And then I just pat my face to wipe off any excess oils or anything that's left on. And then I put on my deep moisture lotion. And this is a beautiful product. And a lot of the youth love this product, I find. And I know Tim likes it too. And um, so I just dab some on and rub it on, a little bit on my eyes. And then I just look at myself and think, wow, look at that skin. <laughs> it looks so good. <laughs> I love it. Perfect, perfect. Um, Cheryl, you mentioned in Tim, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but Cheryl just mentioned that you like this set as well. Is this something that you incorporate in your daily regimen or? Pretty much. Yeah. I, and you know, for a long time. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 No, I was uh, impressed with it because I mean, you know, I always have been somewhat conscious and I've used well, in, historically, I would use the, uh, the the sets that came with the colognes, you know, you know that you buy. <laughs> yeah. That's before I got educated. Um, and, you know, once Cheryl introduced me to all of these, I, she always, you know, used the, um, b both lines and, and I just started using them. And uh, now it's a daily regimen for me. Um, and it varies to which ones I use. Depends mm -hmm. how I feel. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny, Tim. I can remember years ago my father talking to me about skincare, and this was, again, you know, 17, 18, 20 years ago almost at this point. And uh, me at the time, it was kind of like, eh, skincare, I'm a guy, who cares? You know, all that kind of stuff. But the, the, over the last number of years, I have realized how important it is. And, and I, I love this line of products too. And I kind of use them like you do, Tim. I mean, it, it, it's not all of them every day, all the time, but it is something that's on in my bathroom. It's right there by my sink with several other things as well. But these are all great products. And, you know, just to digress a little bit, and I'll, I'll turn back to Cheryl, you and Dolphin for a second. A lot of times we get questions on um, Oilin versus Candescent line, okay? Is there a particular one that's better for mature skin or oily versus dry, youthful skin, maybe dealing with acne? Um, any comments or thoughts, ladies, on that topic? Uh, I'm happy to comment. Go ahead, Cheryl. Um, the Candescent line, um, usually it's the younger generation like it because you know as your skin gets older you need a lot more collagen you need it needs more moisture so the candescent line is very light and a lot of the youth like a lighter um, cream etc however um, 
and we do have special treatments for acne, mm -hmm. um, astringents, things like that. So for problem skin, we cover that as well. But what I find uh, now, a lot of the younger generation is really liking the Oilin skincare line too. So, you know, even though we can define for people if they want a special treatment or a, a special system, um, I think it's like, try it, see what you feel good with, and um, then you can stick with it. We, yeah. we cover it all. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Okay. I, I would also say that, um, like for men, it's really great to have some men talking about skincare today. Um, that it it it's not it's not gender specific either. These these kits or anything. Um, definitely, the scent is very neutral. It's not you know it's not feminine versus masculine, um, which I really like. It's just very inclusive. It because skin is skin. Um, and so, uh, so, uh, again, my, my manly man actually uses, uh, he really likes the oil and deep moisture. Um, he might not do the full, you know, four step or five step process, but, um, you know, he picks and chooses what he likes and just, you know, just educating on, on why it's important to, to nourish the skin and, and, and keep it healthy. And I was one of those 20 year olds too. If I could go back in time, mm -hmm. talk to my 20 year old self, that is one thing that I would talk to me. I was always very conscious about what I was eating, but I was quite um, laissez faire about doing skincare. Mm -hmm. And I wish I'd started sooner with a daily regime of, of facial skincare. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I. They say, Mac, at so 20. At 20, you have the skin you were born with. At 40, you have the skin you deserve. You deserve <laughs> what you created for yourself. Huh? <laughs> and thankfully with Sunrider, we, we regenerate, we can kind of turn back the clock. So, so there's still hope for us when we're 30 and 40 and 50. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, it, it is funny. We're only able to touch on a few selective products in these calls because there's so many that we could talk about. But I, I've kind of found what, what you guys did. And, and Tim, back to your point too. I mean, over the years, I found the ones that work or feel best to me on my skin. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't wear a lot of makeup, so the cleansing cream is something that I don't normally go for, okay? But in terms of the revitalizing cleanser, absolutely. I mean, I'm out there, I am, I, although I, I shouldn't say that. I do use sunblock all the time. I live in Arizona, so that's on there. Um, we're out there in the environment, what's floating around in the air, et cetera. You know, there's a lot of crazy stuff, but I, I've always really liked the gentle cleanser. Um, I, I do in terms of moisturizing, I've, I've kind of had a preference the last bit here with the, um, the Dr. Chin Deep Moisturizing Lotion or the, the Fragrance Free because I don't like, like fragrance necessarily. But again, these are all great products and this is just the beginning. So let's kind of move on, okay? Because there is more to talk about here. Um, this slide again is still kind of dealing with the pH side of things and there's a, some wonderful products up here on the screen. We've talked about a few of them and we'll get to the eye cream and the youth mask and, and in just a second. But another favorite I know for a lot of people is the youth emulsion. And again, ladies, fine. Who wants to jump in on this one first? I, I yep. love the youth emulsion. Um, like I said, for those of us that might have started later in life, um, this is definitely one of the products that can help um, turn back the clock and, and help with, um, I just find uh, just softer, supple, more plump, skin. Um, I live like you, uh, Mac, in a very dry climate here in Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. And so summer or winter, I, we crave, our skin craves moisture. So this one is really, I find, great for that. I don't know a lot of the Cheryl's better at explaining the science behind it and the ingredients, but I just know how my skin feels and looks. So yeah, I love it. Well, there's a setup for you, Cheryl. <laughs> well, Mac, I, I find with Candescent, it's not about the science of it. It's about all we've talked about and that you try it and you feel it and you know 
how wonderful it is. And with the youth emulsion, with the glow it gives you and the way your skin does look beautiful, you know it works. Absolutely. You know, this is one of those products, as well as the youth mask, which came out at the same time, where, again, Dr. Chin was a step ahead of the marketplace. And this is one of the products that does incorporate the stem cells and the peptides that we've talked about. Um, and Cheryl, you mentioned it before, you're right. Um, rare Swiss apple and a French grape stem cell is where the stem cells come from. And these are very special, special things. I mean, Chin looked all over the world and did find this, this apple, the Swiss apple that had a shelf life. I, I think I remember him talking once about it was the same variety of apple that they used to use years ago when we were sailing in the big mass ships, you know, and all of that. And they had to make sure fruit would, would preserve and last a long time. Same basic apple that was used then is, is what he's pulling the stem cells from now. What other note did I have here? Peptides from new buds of those plants. Stem cells have a low pH, so it matches the skin. Uh, it creates a new generation of skin and tissue. The perfect food for the skin. Coming back to a point you've made several times, Cheryl, because it repairs and rejuvenates the skin itself. So, um, again, fabulous stuff. And we'll talk about a couple of other of these cool products coming up right now. Um, one of my personal favorites, which, again, is right there on my sink, is eye cream. And, again, yeah. please, somebody jump in and give us a story about eye cream. Okay, I will. I, 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 I never want to take over, so... No, nah, go ahead. Um, this is an amazing product. Uh, if you have like um, dark, not even dark, even like just shadow, a mm. shadow look under your eyes and you use our eye cream, you'll see that it diminishes. And because it has hyaluronic acid, it holds more moisture in the skin. Yeah. And so when you use it, and I use it around my mouth too, you'll see that it kind of plumps, plumps it up a little bit and, and looks really natural and hydrated. And again, it has the peptides and so uh, and vitamin B5, which is a, an acid also known as vitamin B5, offers plumping and moisturizing. So the eye cream is all about diminishing lines under the eyes, diminishing dark uh, uh, circles or dark spots under the eyes. And like I said, if you know, have issues around your lips, like the lines around your lips, mm -hmm. uh, when you put it on, it also helps to plump that up. So it, it's an amazing eye cream and uh, we use so little. It's like a pea size or less. Yeah. And so it lasts a long time and it does a great job. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect. Dolphin? Uh, I'm fairly new to using the eye cream. Um, I've been using another product that we're going to talk about, I think, next mm -hmm. a lot longer. But I have been start. I started using um, using it. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say for a few months now, and uh, yeah, a couple of things that really stand out: how little you have to use. It's just phenomenal. Um, I'm definitely. I can start to see a reduction in just, you know, the, the little laugh creases and things like that. Uh, and I just want to touch base on something that we said earlier as well that is really important is I know a lot of us women, we spend a lot of money on these tiny little jars mm -hmm. um, and, you know, can be one, $200 for an ounce of some sort of cream. And I tell you, I don't think any of them are half as good as this and ours for what you get it, it's incredible the value the, of of for what you're spending you can spend so much on commercial brands and and you're not getting the ingredient that that you are in these candescent products bar none so right on right yeah. on tim do you use any of these specialty creams yeah, I um, use emulsion. I use it every day. That's the very first thing I put on my face. Uh -huh. And uh, I use eye cream. I use the youth mask. I use pep cream. I use the night emulsion. <laughs> um, 
and I vary them. I mean, you know, I have my base, like I say, with the youth, uh, youth emulsion. Uh -huh. um, and some days I'll use some, um, um, I vary them, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll the day. So uh, one day might be the night emulsion and one day might be the um, exceptional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't know about you, Mac, but I don't think many guys, you know, go to the washing their face and cleansing at night and then putting on the layers of cream. I, and good on you if you do, but I'm not one that has, um, that does that. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm kind of the same way. Tim, another guy after, after my own heart too. I, I, I'm like you, a variety of things and I do mix it up, but it's interesting with the eye cream. I know there was always that, uh, the, image of the the sexy older man with the wrinkles by the eyes and everything and i i thought that was a look i wanted for a period of time and then i realized not so much you know <laughs> so joey and i were talking and she started me on the eye cream well a couple of years ago now and it is something you're right tim do i use it every night full disclosure probably not should i yes <laughs> okay but i do mix it up with other things as well but the eye cream is something that i do like it has done a lot in terms of those crow's feet you know around the eyes certainly and cheryl i'm, I'm glad you mentioned around the, the laugh lines around the face too i hadn't really thought about that before i i do remember you or other people mentioning that in the past but it never really sunk in until right now because you're right a lot of those lines around here do start to form just because we're always so happy and we're smiling, you know, so that's just the way it goes. Um, I am going to jump to the next slide because this is the one, the refining and lifting cream that has been my wife, Joey, her favorite for a long time. And she cracks me up because she'll, I don't know, I, I think it's just a thing now between us, but she'll come into my office and she'll go, Babe, I'm out of that 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 um, that lifting cream stuff. You know, the one I love so much. It's like, well, you know the name of it. Call it by the right name. No, it's that lifting cream. You know, so. But this is something she uses all the time. I love it too. It, it is a fabulous product, and it, it it just again one of those things that I like to mix in in terms of what I'm putting on my face in the evenings. Any testimonies or comments from you guys about refining and lifting cream? Yes, please. <laughs> oh, no. My number one favorite product. So I remember, I can't remember the year, it was 2007, no, it could have been 2007, we were in China then, but it, mm. it was a long time ago, early 2000s when this product came out. And I remember we ended up, I don't know if we ordered it or if we got little free samples of it or at a, we're at a fair, a product fair. All I remember is we were told to put it only on one, under our eye, but only on one side right. so that we could compare. <laughs> now, I was, you know, pretty still, you know, early 30s back then. And like, you know, a lot of my cohorts at that time, we like to stay out late and, mm -hmm. and have some drinks and, and, you know. And so what I find and what I see even with younger generation is this the dark circles under the eyes the puffiness under the eyes the next day after a night of partying and i was starting to get that right i was starting and i was not liking it especially that puffiness and what was amazing is the next day so we i did the one side the next day it was completely clear no puff nothing and the other side you know, it was just such a remarkable difference that i was completely sold and I have not, I've used it every day ever since. There you and go. I don't get any puff. I don't, haven't ever had any puffiness under my eyes, no black circles, nothing like that. Of course, again, as we talk about, you also have to look at your lifestyle and your, what you're eating. But um, just, you know, if you are going to indulge, you can at least uh, still combat it. But oh, gosh, I just, and again, the smallest amount. Just put it on the tip of your finger and dab it under the eyes and um, yeah. So this is my, I, I put this on at night. I use the eye cream during the day. So I kind of mix it up that way too. Got it. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments on refining and lifting cream? 
I love it too, but Finn covered that beautifully. <laughs> Absolutely. And you guys can see some of the incredible ingredients that make up this product up here on the screen. It, it really is a special, special um, uh, skincare product. And I know this is going to sound a bit self-serving in terms of um, buy more, use it faster stuff. But I remember Julie McClewy talking about even using it on the neck and the decollete area in terms of wrinkle prevention around the face, again, in the mouth, Cheryl, et cetera. And um, again, there's so many areas from here to here, you know, that, that do develop wrinkles and are always exposed to the sun and things we better be paying attention to. So great stuff. Um, you know, I put this slide up here just for fun because a lot of people, as we get into these presentations, they'll, they'll start talking about, well, this is all great, but am I applying it properly, et cetera? And if I could, you know, I, I know this is pretty small in terms of the, the look and these things, and I'll try to do a little bit better in my, our next call where we talk about, you know, incorporating candescent and, and the oil and line in terms of building our business. But there's a, a couple of terms here, topotman and effluage, which, which, again, it's just simple ways of applying these things. The, the topotman is, well, Cheryl, you kind of described it before. It's dotting and then applying the right ways around the eye, okay, with things like the eye cream. And in terms of the, the basic four-part stuff, it's, again, it's moving down across the check, chest, up the necks, um, up the cheekbone pushing everything up versus down, okay? It's what you want to go for. So there's a very rudimentary description of those two things. But again, it's something that I remember Julie talking a lot about in terms of how to apply these things to get the maximum benefit from it. So we'll play around with more of that later. Um, any other application techniques before I move off of this slide? Uh, one thing I wanted to say, Mac, is yeah. even before, and I mean, I don't know, I guess it's not a skin care, but it is, is the warm facial scrub. Nah. I start that in the shower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think more so for us guys, uh, it helps, you know, exfoliate all that dead skin that we probably, you know, uh, accumulate more so than the women do because the women are generally taking more care of their skin than us guys. but um i find that's a really good way to start in the shower and uh then i start layering on all the good stuff absolutely sounds great i know i uh we we aren't covering it on this call but the beauty bar is another one that's incredible that's in my shower as well and we'll, we'll come back and we'll do more calls on some of these other products but that's that's the challenge you start looking at these things and you look around your house and what's next to your sink in the bathroom what's in the shower etc and all of a sudden now we've got 30 products we're talking about so we we had to pick a few but tim right on with that one that's another one that we'll want to cover in more depth another time um if we can i kind of like to talk a little bit about the masks and i i we all have our favorite masks, and they, they, there's three I've highlighted here. And sorry about the pictures, guys. It, it's my creating PowerPoint presentations, my lack of expertise there. But in any case, I focused on the clay mask, the revitalizing mask, and the youth mask. And I just, I'll kind of share real quickly here. One of the most favorite things I used to love with my daughters when they were both living at home is at least once a month, we would have a mask day. And it was not only for our skin, but it was a way for me to kind of do something with my daughters that was fun and entertaining. And the one we always liked the most was the revitalizing mask because it's cool. You put it on, you let it dry, and then you get to peel it off, which how cool is that, right? I mean, you could actually see this thing peeling off. And um, better effect on our, our Fusion Network website, one of the um, videos that we created years ago now was back in the Why I Love Sunrider Creating Video Days was... We were at a, a very good friend, part of our Sunrider group here in Phoenix, Lisa Powers. We were at her house and Lisa allowed us to kind of film around her home and various things. And there's a couple of scenes wonderful with, well, first of all, Lisa poking your head out of the shower, around the shower curtain going, I can't believe I'm doing this and letting you film me washing your hair with candescent shampoo. And then we have another one where she's actually peeling off the revitalizing mask. So if you, if you want a good laugh, go back and look at that video. It's on the website. In any case, 
a wonderful mask. It exfoliates, it, it exfoliates, easy for me to say, it hydrates, it rejuvenates the skin, uh, made with wheat germ, avocado and jojoba seed oils, um, a wonderful product. Clay mask is another one that my daughters really liked, especially when they were dealing with acne because again, the clay was something that dries out acne really well. You can dab on, you know, acne infected areas, et cetera. And youth mask, I'll let somebody else talk about and then I'll come back and offer some information there. But do you guys use any of these masks? If so, let us know what you think about them, please. I love the revitalizing mask. Um, I try to do it once a week. I'm not always successful, but uh, I mean, your skin just glows after you pull that mask off. Make sure you pull down because pulling up can, you go against the little hairs on your face and it's out. I mean, it's ouchy. So yeah, pull the, pull the mask down. Um, and it's really fun to try and get it so that, you know, it looks like your face, right? Like, yes. Yeah. Um, and then the youth mask, um, this is one that you leave on. So it's not a mask that you wash off. That's a little different than the, the clay mask and the, and the revitalizing. Um, but uh, so what I love is I use the youth mask at night. I do all my creams or whatever. And then this is the last one to seal in the moisture. So that's its purpose as I believe is mm -hmm. that it just seals in moisture. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I use the youth mask every night. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Cheryl? Um, I love the clay mask. I use it once a month, but um, around my nose and mm -hmm. sort of the oily tea, even though I don't really have an oily tea. I just find it keeps everything really clean around there. And like you said, Max, great for anybody who has acne and because it doesn't, even though it dries out the acne, it doesn't dry out your skin. And, uh, or if you have a little blemish, if you just put it on at night in the morning, it's much better. Mm -hmm. I do the revitalizing mask, the peel mask every couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, I absolutely love it. And like Finn, I like to see if I can get the whole thing off. <laughs> <laughs> and then you see all those little holes in it and it's, it's so fun. The youth mask, I actually use that twice a day. Um, I put it on in the morning after I do my skincare as the last step. And then at night before I go to bed, when I do my skincare, I put it on again as the last step. So fantastic, all, all the masks. Absolutely. Tim, how about you? Have you tried any of these masks? Uh, yeah, um, well, all of them. I mean, it's, just, it's pretty rare for me to do a clay mask. I mean, I a couple times. Uh, the revitalizing mask I have done occasionally. Mm -hmm. uh, the youth mask, actually I use it every day. I put it on after I put on my other creams and I just, it's the last thing I put on during the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And you know, I, I remember you guys have all said that about the, the youth mask. And I know that's one of the things I remember when it first came out that, that Mrs. Chin spoke about because we kind of pinned her on, pinned her down on, okay, how do we use this as part of our regimen of daily skincare? And she spoke exactly the same thing. It was always the last thing that she would put on. And Finn, I think you said it because it kind of seals everything in, which is awesome. And I, I again, just a couple more comments from me. Again, back with my daughters on the revitalizing mask, it was as much of it was in terms of cleanliness and in, in revitalizing the skin. It was a, a great bonding experience with my daughters is what I liked most about that whole thing. And it was one thing that the three of us really looked forward to doing together. So that was really cool. And um, last comments on the, the youth mask. I remember, again, Julie McClewy talking a lot about the exceptional ingredients and Things like barley, which is an exceptional moisturizing properties, aloe vera gel, which is anti-irritation um, and calms the skin, sandalwood extract, which smooths and conditions the skin, vitamin E and A, which are powerful antioxidants that again nourish the skin, all in the squalene base, the salicylic acid, which smooths the skin. Again, the formulation, the expertise that goes into creating these things are, well, right back full circle that we've been talking about on this entire call. So doctors Chin, take our hats off to you one more time there. Um, when you talk to people, once they start using these, these products and ladies, you can probably testify to this more than I can, but having worked with women for a number of years and men too, Tim, of course, on, on skincare, 
I know how, how loyal people are to the skincare that they currently use. And I know it's challenging sometimes to get people to try new things because they, they kind of lock on to what's kind of proven to them at the time. And so there is an education process that's involved. And that's why I like going through some of the things we've talked about today. What are some of the superior ingredients that we use? What we don't use in our products? How the formulation is so critical? Um, the various ingredients and what they do. And then again, how they're all put together so they truly provide the most effective products that can be out there in the market. And again, this is what we hear from people once they kind of change brands and, and again, right back to switching brands like we do with the foods, how we encourage people to do that. Same thing here in the feedback we 99.9% .9 of the time we get is a reduction in appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. I mean, visible improvement in the skin tone, softer, more supple skin. People love these products once they start using them. So again, if we can just educate people and provide information, you know, these are great things for, for folks to consider. Um, you guys- can I, can I say one thing? Absolutely, we... Dolphin, absolutely. Um, so another thing that, I, I had a, a brand new client last week uh -huh. and uh, she, I was finishing up with her and just showing her some exercises to, to do afterwards. And she just all of a sudden burst out and she said, your skin is amazing. It just glows. What, how, what do you, you know, what do you use? And I said, oh, I said, I use some really good products. Um, I can tell you about some other time. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, Tim mentioned the exceptional cream and I know, you know, we have so many specialty creams, but that another, other than, you know, the, the suppleness and the anti-aging and reducing fine lines, but our, also our skin glows. And I believe candescent there, that's the meaning of the word is that it, it allows the skin to almost be iridescent or, or, um, a glowy type of skin and so um, I love the exceptional cream I think it does its job really really well for that particular feature um, but yeah just having that that youthful glow is also really I remember when we first got in to yep. Sunrider of candescent both the butterfly and back in the day um, they there was concubines and the Emperor would choose which concubine he'd be with when they would let a butterfly uh, alight in the room and whoever had the most glowing face the butterfly would land on that was his choice <laughs> yeah so that's where we got the name candescent <laughs> i love it i love it and, and you're right i probably should have led with this at the beginning of the presentation and, and dolphin and shirley you just referenced it but you're right i i made a note i remember when dr chin when i first heard him talking about this the name candescent itself means iridescent beauty from within shining forth so right on dolphin you know as far as that goes um great stuff absolutely you guys absolutely and that's a great segue cheryl's story to the beauty pearl because Right. right. The Beauty Pearl was, I think, a formula that um, the vampires' wives used to keep their skin looking beautiful from the inside out. I, I think that's the story, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, you see, they little. They look like little, little pearls. Um, yeah. I chew them every night. I, I have one. Uh, I wanted to tell a story about a guy in Sunrider. Right. Uh, his name was John, and one day I was looking at his skin. We were sitting at a table together, and I said to him, your skin is amazing. And you know what he told me? When the Beauty Pearl came in those glass, or uh, I think it was plastic container, and I think there was seven of them in there, mm -hmm. he would do seven a day. Wow. But his skin was amazing. Wow. Because it nourishes the skin from the inside, has raw jelly, chrysanthemum, Korean white ginseng, all ingredients that are there to nourish and regenerate from the inside. And, um, you know, a lot of uh, young people that I have in my group love it for when their monthly cycle comes because they feel much better from it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Beauty Pearl, amazing product. Yeah, great for puberty. For mood swings, for for boys and girls, 
um, just to help them through, you know, help them through as their hormone, the endocrine system is changing, um, helping with, uh, for acne and, and all that kinds of things that youth can typically go through the beauty pearls. Fantastic. And then of course, ongoing, I mean, you know, all through life, but as early as, as puberty is a great time to start taking beauty pearl. Absolutely. You know, it, it's funny. And I, I, I know I'm in advance, I'm going to get in trouble for saying what I'm about to say <laughs> from both my wife and my daughters. But these two products on the screen right now, Beauty Pearl and Bella, were my two favorite products about 10 years ago because I had two daughters going through puberty and I had a wife starting menopause and um, love them all. But these were things that really helped us maintain a calm atmosphere around the house. So absolutely, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Um, I know we put Bella up here too, which again is Latin for beauty. And, and again, it's one more of the products that we ingest that actually build and, and replenish our skin on the outside too, as, as well as impacting the endocrine system and, and those kind of things. But um, anything you'd like to share about Bella, ladies? Well, Mac, I mean, Bella, every woman over the age of 35, for sure over the age of 40, could or should be taking Bella um, as, as our endocrine system as we start to go through perimenopause and menopause. And that change in our, in our endocrine system definitely affects our skin. So we want to help nourish that endocrine system to help um, you know, keep the hormones in balance so that our skin can continue to be um, soft and supple and, and all that kind of stuff. So nourishing the endocrine system is really important for the, for the skin. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Cheryl? Well, I just want to say um, with these products, I went through menopause without even really having any side effects whatsoever. And now like my, I'm 70 and my skin is like, it's like I'm in my 30s as far as my skin is concerned. So I know um, with Bella, it just keeps you in balance. You know, it doesn't even matter if it's going through menopause or after menopause. You don't, you, I hear these stories of women feeling down or, or crazy or whatever happens. But with Bella, you just feel like your normal, happy self. So both products are, are awesome. So I, I like them both. Yeah, I, agree. I, even, I even Tim has an experience with Bella, even though it's a woman's product. Yeah, please, Tim, here. Uh, well, I just when I have taken it, I find it just sort of it also it's the calming thing, calming of. So, I don't know. <laughs> it's just it helps you sleep. You said it helps you sleep. Yeah, it, sometimes you do what you find what works, right? Yeah. Well, and, and you just touched, I mean, when you look at the ingredients, the, the barren wort in particular uh, naturally supports healthy blood sugar levels, but it's traditionally been used to ease anxiety, help fight fatigue and memory loss. So again, you look at the ingredients now, the chins have put these things together. They, they're certainly multifaceted in terms of how they can help us. And I, I can't say I've ever used Bella. I have used um, Beauty Pearl in the past. And gosh, I think it was one of my, um, my Australian friends that had first she handed me the, the jar and I said, oh, well, that's for women. And she goes, oh, no, Mac, these are known as macho marbles. They'll really help you kind of chill out and calm down and not be so aggressive, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So I, that one kind of stuck with me. Anyway, um, again, fabulous products. And we wanted to include these. And one other quick slide here before we finish up on some of the other. And again, these are just four things that we picked that help again, nourish the skin and support collagen um, production from the inside, as well as some of the things we've talked about from the outside. And I, I don't want to go into a lot of detail with these because we've talked about all of these products in the past. But, you know, when you look at it's something like VitaFruit in particular, and, and if you look back at some of the ingredient highlights for, for some of the skincare, sea buckthorn fruit is one of the things that you might have seen, vitamin C, et cetera. Um, some of the things that are in something like Vitafruit are also in as key ingredients in our skincare products. 
And again, the whole idea of nourishing, balancing, and cleansing our bodies on the inside, supporting that sixth element, Cheryl, that you said so many times about the largest organ in our body is our skin. So we need to feed it as well as feeding it, you know? And anything you guys would like to say about this slide? I'd like just to point out, you just kind of said it, Mac, that all of the ingredients are food in our skincare. Right. In fact, Dr. Rubin even said it on the call last week that, you know, he doesn't recommend it, but you could eat the skincare. Yep. And that says a lot to me um, about what I'm putting on my body because our, our skin is porous. So it, of course it goes into our body. So just the the safety and uh, of knowing that there's no chemicals in it and that the, the the ingredients that we use to nourish the inside of our body is also the ingredients that are used for the skincare. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's funny, uh, another one of my demonstrations I love to do is when we're uh, doing a candescent presentation and I'll, I'll bring in some of the foundations sometimes. And I'll do an experiment with commercial Brown foundations and the the Sunrider Foundation, which is again dissolve, you can actually dissolve it in water. It, it it's it's it can be emulsified in water, and I'll actually drink the glass of water afterwards just to show make your point, Dolphin. About yeah, these are all food grade ingredients that go in here, and you can consume them if you want to. And uh, I think I, I I did that in front of Ruben once, and even saw his jaw drop when I did that one. But um, you know, it's again, it's proof of of the quality of these 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 products. So right on. Anything else? Um, I would just like to say that um, the way you really know if the products work, of course, is to use them. And uh, you know what I see happening often out in the marketplace is people buy what they're uh, advertised to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so they try all these different things all the time and, and then they think they don't get a result. But if you're tried and true, if you, if you really take these products and consistently use them, there is absolutely no doubt whatsoever you are gonna see a major difference and love what you see. Absolutely, that's great, Cheryl. Um, Tim, Kind of final comments to you in terms of the male perspective in skincare and some of these foods. Was there a couple of things? First of all, is there anything you'd like to say just to kind of close the thing down from the men's perspective? And I also wanted to ask you if 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 a man was to come to you and say, um, "Tell me the top three skincare products you would suggest I use." Do you have an answer for that? I mean, what would you direct somebody to if they were new to all of this as a man? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I obviously my experience and what I use is what I would refer uh, someone to. And again, that goes back to after, you know, exfoliating my face in the shower with warm facial scrub or one of the other cleansers then. And after shaving, I, I use the youth um, emulsion mm -hmm. uh, for starters. And then I layer on the, uh, exceptional or the night emulsion and uh, then I cover it with the use mask um, and I use the eye cream not all the time but occasionally and I mean there's there's a number as we all know the number of other products skincare products in the product line that are phenomenal as well mm -hmm. that touched on today that um, you know whether they be supplemental or use them every day but you know, it also starts with what are you putting in your body. So just to, you know, the food products, um, like the Vita Fruit and the Cali and the Fortune and the Vita Shake and New Plus. Mm -hmm. You know, you're working at it from both sides. You're working at it from internal and you're working internal. So I think it's important for both. You got it. You and me both. And Tim, that's why I'm. I, I mean. 
Dolph and Cheryl, I, I loved you guys and doing these calls with you too, but I, I'm really pleased that Tim was able to join us on this one as well and kind of share more than just myself in terms of the male perspective and the importance of skincare for all of us, be it male or female. And, and again, these are incredible products. The efficacy is right where they need to be. The price point that referred to is perfect in terms of the value that we're receiving for these incredible products and foods that we consume. And again, I, I'm excited about, you know, in the next week or so, we'll do the, the complimentary call to this one where I, I'd like to talk a little bit about how to take these incredible products we just talked about and actually incorporate them into our business. And maybe we'll try to do it since everyone's doing meetings virtually these days anyway, maybe we'll try to set up and, and incorporate a, a short candescent virtual presentation, you know, where we'll just sample a few products and again, share a few things about how to then carry it on to get the sale, how we want to cross market with other things, etc. So again, I can't thank you guys enough. Um, Dolphin, Cheryl, Tim, you guys are fabulous. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, any last comments from anybody before we close the thing down today? Just well, want to say thank you so much, Mac. Great job on putting this all together for us. And we really appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks, Finn. You're always sharing so, so great. Thanks, honey, for being on with us. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to say, uh, you know, all four of us are in the 50 plus age group and i think we all look pretty fantastic so there you um, go. being a product of the product like cheryl said you just have to use it and, and give it a really you know a, a good fair shake and you can't help but see results so right on yep yep well i i think we're all testimonies to the products and how effective they are for sure so great stuff and again you guys hey thank you so much for being on the call appreciate you guys sharing so much and we'll come back to everybody here in the next couple of weeks and kind of incorporate this business aspect into things but um thank you everybody thank very you. much thank you